gives you some tips about Japanese. So I'm not really going to teach you Japanese, I'm just going to try to help you learn Japanese to give you a short introduction to the language and some tips for learning it. So, um, I'll give you an overview of the presentation. First I'll give my personal impression of the language. Then I'll talk a bit about the writing system. Um, followed by yeah, resources and other tips. Um, then I will go a bit into how to adapt your computer to Japanese. So for instance adapting Anki and how to type Japanese. Um, then some sounds. Some of the more difficult sounds. And uh, yeah, any remaining time is for Q&A and phrases you want to know or anything else. So, some personal impressions. Well, the first one is not a personal impression. It's, uh, it's a language isolate. Although some, so there are no, officially there are no related languages. Although a lot of linguists say that a lot of the dialects of Japanese are actually separate languages. Especially in a small, where there are, in the area where there are a lot of small islands, basically every island is, has a very different dialect. Um, because it's not related to anything, there will probably be quite some things that are unfamiliar to you, but it's a very regular language. Um, yeah, and some other properties, it's always, it's verb final, and some things that are quite easy, there are no plurals, there are no articles, there are no Gen there's no gender, there's no personal number agreement, um, yeah, and quite, a, and quite some other things. Some interesting challenges, the writing system, of course. It's a combination of three alphabets, so we'll get into that soon. Um, then there are many levels of formality and ways to express them. Basically, as a foreigner, you don't need to learn how to produce them, because it's most Japanese people consider it ultra polite if you have learned three words in their language but it's still good to understand whether somebody is very formal or very informal especially if you watch something that's or read something that's translated to English then it's at least good to know what the different levels of formality are because that's one of the things that's often get lost in translation basically if you don't know them you don't know whether people are calling each other bastards or your highness <laughs> and what's also a bit difficult is the word order for English. In a simple sentence, it's not that big a deal, so the verb comes at the end, so what? But everything, if you have a complex sentence for an English speaker, it will feel like everything is in reverse. And for production, you'll get used to it quite quickly, but I think especially for comprehension, to comprehend a sentence in reverse order can take quite a while. Um, so, the writing system. Um, well, first there's homaji, so that's basically just romanization. This is an example sentence, it means. Um, then there's the Japanese syllabary, sorry, syllabary, so that's the underlying parts. Basically, you use the syllabary for, um, for grammar, if it means anything to you for um, closed class words. So, for um, yeah, particles and things that have a grammatical function and use the complex characters or kanji or Chinese characters because they took them from Chinese for all the nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs and so on. Then there's the katakana which is also a syllabary but that's the one you use if you have foreign words. So for instance my own name I would write in katakana because, yeah, there's no specific Japanese character for my name or the katakana then. So it has all the syllables from the hiragana, but also some extra ones to be able to, yeah, write some sounds that you don't have in Japanese. And uh, one more aspect of Japanese is that it's quite strictly consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. Which is especially funny in loan words because then they also insert a lot of vowels, so for instance, Christmas is Christmas, or um, ice cream is ice cream. <laughs> um, and basically, written Japanese is a combination of these three scripts all together. So, and um, these two you can learn quite quickly, and the kanji, 
you need to know about 2,000 of them to be able to to read. Um, so, sorry to interrupt you. Hi, Supremo. If you said the k r, there's no vowel between. Well, well, there are also voiceless vowels in Japanese, so sometimes, I mean, sometimes it kind of vanishes a bit. You hardly hear it, or it's anyway skipped. So. It's strictly consonant vowel, consonant vowel, at least on the surface, uh, uh, um, on the deep level. But on the surface, some vowels might be dropped anyway. Yeah, I understand. But which one did you drop after the kurimu or whatever? Uh, <laughs> it's hard to do it consciously. I said kurimu. Kurimu. So yeah, which I dropped it between a k and the r, but it might also be my non-native pronunciation. Um, and last but not least, there's something called hurigana. Um, which is when you have a complex character and you write the syllabary either on top or next to it. And you actually also see this in, of course it's very useful for learners, but you also see it in Japanese materials. For instance, if it's um, directed at children or if there's some character that's hardly ever used, you will see some syllables on top or next to it. So, also present some books. So I used uh, Teach Yourself Complete. It's a very good book, but the complete is a bit optimistic. That's one of the only things that wasn't so good. And it doesn't teach you a lot of kanji. So if you're especially interested in learning the kanji, this might not be the Right book for you, but otherwise it's very good, and it has very good chapters on for learning the hiragana and katakana. Um, then I had this one: Japanese sentence patterns for effective communication. Um, it teaches you all the sentence patterns for at a beginner and intermediate level. So it has a short explanation and then five to ten example sentences. Especially useful if you like learning with Anki. You can just take the sentences to your Anki deck and start learning with it. And one book I reviewed but haven't used it much yet is 72 Ways to Learn Japanese for Free by Udit. It has just has a lot of good tips and yeah you will also maybe find a lot of stuff to use once you're a bit more advanced. So dictionaries. Um, if you still like offline dictionaries, like bought this one, you can get it for 15 euros at Usman um, here in Berlin. And what I especially liked about this one is that it has a lot of example sentences, so that makes it quite useful for if you're learning the language. Um, then I'm not going to go into these online dictionaries, so I'll try to post them somewhere so you can yeah, find them again. So probably on the Facebook page, or if you don't have Facebook, then you can come afterwards and give me your email address so I can write it down. Um, so now I'm going to go into some <coughs> websites. For, my favorite for learning kanji is um, Kanji Damage. don't know why it's called this way, but... Um, and I'll just explain a bit what the site looks like. So first you have the character and what it means, sort of the general meaning. Um, then it breaks it down into its parts, so this, in this case it's white and feathers. And then you can also click on the parts in case you're not familiar with those parts. Um, then there's another aspect of, um, of uh, Japanese characters, or Japanese, of Japanese writing system, and that's for each character there's a Japanese pronunciation, or reading, and a Chinese reading, to make it even more fun. Um, but basically, as a rule of thumb, if you have an isolated character, you use the Japanese reading, and if you have compound characters, you use the Chinese reading. And um, each character on this page has a mnemonic that connects all the relevant information. So, um, the pronunciation, the, um, the parts of the character, and the general meaning. So in this case, it's... Um, if you learn, so that's the general meaning, how to use your white, that's one of the parts. Air Jordan shoes, shoes is then uh, sort of representative for shoe, 
but you don't have it in Omnius language, so you couldn't use it in mnemonic correctly. They'll be like feathers that float you up to the basket. So for each character, there's this short story that connects all the relevant information. Um, yeah, and one reason why it's useful to learn the pronunciation of the characters because sometimes it's very obvious what a character means from the combined meanings, but sometimes it's not. So for instance, um, if you have United Nations, it's made up of um, country and connection. But if you see country and connection, which you don't mean that the combined ones mean um, United Nations, but you do mean to know that country is pronounced koku and connect, the character for connection is pronounced ren, and you know that koku ren is United Nations, then you can also get yeah, words that way. Which is quite useful because quite a lot of the time you can't guess it right away because it's some it's some uh, combinations of characters are really obvious but not all of them yeah and then it will also give some like, example words for each character that's also quite useful so some other tips um, Japanese level up and come, uh, dot com sorry <laughs> it's a blog for and by Japanese learners and I found a lot of amazing tips there and a lot of resources and um, especially the media guide is very useful. You can find everything from yeah, variety shows, drama, anime, books. Um, I found it has, I think, everything but poetry. I haven't seen poetry in the media guide. And the blog, this blog also has a lot of um, articles that are just fun. So there's some things you will encounter in Japanese, and then somebody has probably written an article about it. So one thing you will probably encounter as a Japanese learner is that people are constantly complimenting on how good your Japanese is, so you even know you only spoke three words. <laughs> and they just spoke perfect, perfect German and are like, no, my German is... Uh. Um, and then somebody wrote an article, nine funny ways to respond to the, the repetitive compliments that your Japanese is <laughs> great. Like a lot of those articles that really relate to your yeah, experience as a Japanese um, learner. Um, one thing that's really useful is the Likai-chan um, dictionary plugin. Actually, the one for Chinese is called exactly the same, so you might need to watch out if you install the one for Japanese and not for Chinese. And it's a plugin where you can just, if, you do, if you're reading a Japanese web page and you can't read a certain character, you can mark it and you'll get a dictionary pop-up that will explain the character to you. I will have a screenshot, by the way. Um, another fun site you could use for um, learning how to read is Nendai Yuko. It basically means, Nendai means like age or time period and Yuko means um, trends. So it's basically a page that um, can either do it by decennium or by the kind of trend. So you can for instance see what the 60s were like in Japan or you can um, or you can do it by category and see what kind of hairstyles people had. And basically, I'm suggesting it because it's a good way to, yeah, learn how to read, but at the same time also get a lot of cultural references. And um, one page is, and if you want to have an easy version of the news, you can go here, and I'll have a screenshot of that one right now. And um, so this is an. Yeah, basically the news in easy Japanese, and, I've, and if you have the Kaichan in, installed, you can also mark stuff you don't know, and that way reading becomes quite easy, so then it's already simplified, and if you then don't know a character, you can still mark it and find out what it means. So you can, might even be able to start reading right away if you want. Well, you would need to know some basic grammar, but yeah. So, typing Japanese. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate this for Windows, because on all the other operating systems, A, I don't know, and B, especially for Linux systems, it can be quite difficult, uh, different depending on the system you have. But for Windows, you either go to here, to the bottom right corner, or to your control panel. Then 
you will eventually find the settings. And there you can add Japanese. And important for Windows is that you add the one that's called uh, Microsoft IME. So, and once you've added that, we'll have Japanese. And you, once you have that, there are several <coughs> input modes, alphanumeric is if you just want to yeah, type normal letters. And if you want to type Japanese, you go to hiragana. Uh, the very practical thing about this is that you basically just type how you say stuff. So, if I want to... So, this is the syllabary, and as soon as I have typed something that has a special character, I can hit the spacebar and it automatically makes a complex character out of it. So this sentence is which is one of my favorite sentences. It means my stomach is, literally it means my stomach is empty, which means I'm hungry. Um, and in case of homonymies, you have the choice. Yeah, I can also show you that. So if I have, so this is rain, and it automatically selects the right one. I really like this character. It looks like a window with raindrops outside. It's one of the easiest. Mm -hmm. But let's say I did one. How do you pronounce it? What? How do you pronounce it? Amen. Chinese is mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but the funny thing is that once you have a compound word, you have the Chinese pronunciation. So then this character's pronunciation becomes the. So, that like, well, so if I drop. if I would have raindrop, I don't I, I don't know the character combination for raindrop, but then the pronunciation of the rain character would probably become you. And if this is the wrong character, I can hit the spacebar again and browse through the other options. And there's a computer algorithm that it usually takes the one you use most often as the first option. So. And also, um, as an input mode, you also have the katakana, either full width or half width, so half characters or full characters. But um, sometimes it will also just recognize that something, oh, let's make that bigger again. Sometimes it will also just recognize that something is not Japanese. So if I type my name, to recognize that it's not the Japanese word and write it in katakana once I hit the space bar. Sorry, in the spoken language, would you use the Chinese pronunciation or the Japanese word? Depending on the word. So, <laughs> so if it's, yeah, I don't know where this came from, this ridiculous writing system. And basically, if it's a Japanese word, you have one complex character, or an isolated um, complex character, or an isolated complex character with some Japanese syllables on it, and all, com all, all complex words are, uh, well not all of them, if you have a complex word, so a character that's written with two or more complex characters, you usually have the Chinese pronunciation, but not always, there are exceptions. Uh, yeah. So, adapting Anki to Japanese. So, the first thing you need to do is to install Japanese support. So, you start Anki. It's actually the Japanese word for memorization or memory. <laughs> so, you can find that under Tools and then add-ons, browse and install, and then browse, and there you can look for the, for the add-on that's called Japanese support. And what I will quickly demonstrate is what uh, Japanese cards can look like. 
So this is this um, this is an example sentence sentence again. Um, I've chosen the, black, uh, the blue background because it's easier on the eyes than black and white. Um, I've made the Japanese characters quite big because basically you're learning a new alphabet. So just like you learned your first alphabet, you make the letters nice and big. And the feature that took longest to find out how to program is if I hover over a complex character with my mouse, I get the syllabary instead of the complex character. Yeah, and then the meaning, and here you could have space for comments and mnemonics. So you can either, yeah, try to find out how to program something f like this for yourself, or I will, but I will also post this design on Facebook so you can just copy it. Does this also work for the Anki app, or does it work? Uh, Anki app, I don't know, but uh, at least for the for the web version of Anki, um, it will. The mouse over function doesn't work. So if you're on AnkiWeb.net, it will show you it like this, no matter where your mouse is. So that's a bit unfortunate. And basically, if you have any problems with the Japanese, um, with getting Japanese to work for Anki, you can go to the web page of the Japanese support plugin, and there you will find a lot of help in the comment section on how to get Japanese to work on Anki. So, now we get to some sounds. First, the infamous Japanese R, but like this because depending on your native language it will sound like an R or an L or sometimes even a D. Um, it's like an L or an R, but it's basically a quick uh, tap of the tongue on the alveolar layer, on the alveolar ridge, on the ridge up here. So, now we're going to practice this. So, it's like <laughs> like a quick, a quick throat R, like a quick tap of the tongue on the ridge here. Yeah. Uh, well, the, this sound is quite common for, uh, for example, in Spanish and Italian. When you say uh, pero, pero, this is a monovibrant sound or dire. And dire. in uh, in English, in American English, when you say serie, a serie, you don't say CT but like in British. CT is British and Siri is more American. Is this sound? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think actually phonetically in Japanese it's a lateral tap. A lateral tap? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, sorry. Tap and flat is something different, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a very quick tap on the ridge. Yeah, because it's not alveolar, it's lateral. So it's Ah, okay, sorry, yeah, so I, I was talking about <laughs> the sound he had described. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I described I don't, it. I don't speak Japanese, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, put your tongue like if you were about to speak an L or an R, and then make a quick tap of the tongue on the ridge. Romanization, it's always transcribed as an R. So, another one is the U. Uh, so, it's basically an U. Uh. Now, I'm exaggerating a bit with how much I'm pouting my lips. And basically, it's the less rounded version of that. So, you start with an U, uh, and then you go U, uh, U, uh, U, uh, U. Uh, uh. yeah, a bit more rounded. Uh, uh. So it's U and more uh, uh. You can also start from a schwa, uh, and then go a little bit more back and stretch. Uh. Yeah, that's already better. So for English and German, the F is with um, your lips on your teeth. Um, and for Japanese, it's just between your lips. So, um, so you're basically just breathing out. So now a word that combines them all, hurigana. Hurigana. A very useful word with the uh is daijoube. 
it means, like, if you watch anime, you've already heard it a uh, hundred or two hundred times. It means, like, fine or are you fine, if, with rising intonation. It's actually one thing you will hear quite a lot about Japanese, mm -hmm. is that you can only make questions with question particles, but if in informal Japanese you can also have one word phrases with rising intonation to make a question. So one more thing is um, double consonants. So you have totemo, very, and basically skip a bit, totemo. It's basically the same word but with more emphasis. <laughs> I found this the easiest contrast to make instead of taking something Although it would have been more funny if I knew a funny one, where one means, I don't know, like in Swedish where you have a contrast between drunk and ugly. <laughs> I know an example. Mm -hmm. Oh, as I said, it's Japanese that if you pronounce it differently, it means a different thing. Mm -hmm. So, Ippai Bira no Masho means mm -hmm. I want another glass of beer. Mm -hmm. But if you say Ippai Bira no Masho, like pronounce it Ippai more, it means mm -hmm. I'm already drunk. Yeah, yeah, because ippai with the double consonant means full. Like one useful phrase is, for instance, also more ippai means I'm full, like I've eaten enough. And this difference is just like in Italian, for example. Yeah, I think it, I think I don't speak Italian or Finnish or any other languages that have this um, aspect, but I think it's the same principle. I don't know. Maybe someone can confirm this, but. And maybe the difference is, is just how you describe it, because um, uh, Japanese is based on mora, so basically units of sound that are of equal length. So the way to describe this in Japanese would be to say you skip a beat, and maybe if you were describing Italian or Finnish, you, it would basically be the same thing, but you might describe it in another way. So, any questions or phrases you'd like to know, or anything else? <laughs> if there so are to learn Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, could you repeat the thing uh, the word from uh, starting from I think? Uh yeah yeah I can repeat that one. So I can write it in um, romanization underneath. So this is the, that sentence. And you will also notice that everything is written together in Japanese, but mostly you will still be able to recognize where um, the borders between words are, because after almost any word there's some grammatical particle or something like this, so you'll still notice where one word starts and the other one ends. How do you pronounce it? Anyone want to give it a try? Yeah, quite good. <laughs> um, a similar one is... It's basically a similar concept. Nodoga um, waita. Okay, now it takes the wrong one. Sorry. So it's not always easy to type Japanese because sometimes the algorithm screws up and gives you the wrong characters. But it's very practical that it's there because it basically means that you don't need to know how to write the characters, you only need to know how to read them so you know that the algorithm has chosen the right one. Yeah, now it takes the right one. So this means my throat is dry and you can probably guess what that means. In uh, my throat is dry, meaning I'm thirsty. So and I'll write it again in... Um, my throat is dry. You're missing the... Uh, I noticed that you don't write the, the verb in the end. The sentence but with a verb. That's, 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 that's a that's more uh, formal version of the same sentence, basically. Yeah, that's one thing in Japanese there. 
one thing that I found most difficult in Japanese because there are so many different ways to say the same thing, it's really hard to understand Japanese because basically I can say a lot, but if somebody says the same thing in a different way, I have no chance of understanding it via another language because it's an isolate. Yeah? Uh, and do Japanese uh, have a different pronunciation according to the region they come from, or is it...? Uh... Uh, yes, basically they call it an isolate Japanese, but some of the dialects are so different that linguists call them different languages. So like officially the Japanese states wants everybody to think that it's all the same language, but it's really not. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about stress in the words? Is there a regular stress or do you it's, have to uh, the, uh, the intonation is quite flat, okay. which is quite difficult if you don't speak a so-called flat language, but... Okay, so there's no... There's no stress. There's no stress per no. word. So it's just... Or is there another stress, like... <laughs> No, no, like, basically, just especially if you speak a language, speak languages that have lots of stress, you, what you need to learn is to make it as, there's still some intonation, of course, but relative to most of our languages in, most of our native languages, I'm guessing, of course, it's quite flat. Okay. So maybe it's more like French, which is also quite flat, as far as I've heard. Okay, so, basically, speak like a robot. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> or at least it's not that important. For instance, if I'm learning Swedish, or when I learned Swedish, one of the first things I learned was the melody, because it's so a central part of the pronunciation, that as soon as I got um, the melody right, people thought I came from Sweden, basically, even though I only spoke a few sentences, basically. And if you have a language that's relatively flat, like okay, it would still be good to learn the melody, but it's basically just not as important. People won't notice it that much because it's not that an important part of pronunciation. Yeah. Um, a couple of questions um, about phonetics. Um, I have heard that there is a kind of tonal system. Uh, the, the, the second question is about syntax. <laughs> okay, you, I'll, I'll first some? get to tone. Yeah. So, there are some tone contrasts. Um, I probably can't pronounce them right, but for instance, the word hashi can mean um, bridge as well as chopsticks. Probably people will laugh if you, if you pronounce the wrong one. Um, but it's probably quite clear from context where you mean chopsticks or bridge. And there's a list of about 20 words like this that have a tone contrast. Okay. Or in the complete language there are probably more, but if you, mm -hmm. some um, reference books will have like mm -hmm. 20 most or 30 most important words to know that have a tone difference, mm -hmm. have a tone contrast. Okay, and the tones are, how are these, these two tones? Um, so the one I know for uh, bricks and chopsticks, it's like the one is, um, I'm probably doing this wrong, but um, the first flat and then up is bridge, so hakshi is, um, is bridge, and hakshi is chopsticks. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question in Japanese, but I'm not sure if I'm going to mess it up or not. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> so he asked whether I've been to Japan and I answered that I haven't been there. Okay. <laughs> the last word was? Arimaska. Arimaska. I, I, heard, I heard this. Uh, Arimas <laughs> is a verb and ka is the uh, question point. So anytime okay. you want to ask something, you add the ka. Yeah. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. you know, Arimas. Arimas means? I am. Uh, like to the, like this abstract to be and you use it, yeah. So you ask, so am I? No, another you. Uh, Nihon ni? 
Japan, where? Going to Japan. I, mean, to I can also write this kind yeah. of sentence. <laughs> this might be easier. Uh, maybe I'll just write the globalization. So, um, so uh, let's see which one did you use. Um, sorry, I have a small blackout here. But um, yeah, that would be easy because it's going to load down. Yeah. So, Nihon ni ita koto ga arimasu so basically this means um, Japan um, towards went thing subject does it exist so Ko make, koto, is, koto is like thing or fact so to paraphrase this um, going to Japan thing or fact does it exist uh, meaning does it exist for you <laughs> so have you had this experience yeah, yeah. Right. So, it's a quite interesting uh, sentence. Uh, Koto and then ga? Uh, ka is the subject particle. Yeah. Okay, and so, oh, okay. Uh, Arimas ka. Yeah. Arimas means? Um, like to be or to exist. So, does it exist? Like, yeah. does the and fact exist that you've been to Japan? And where is, it, where is the you? Um, the you have dropped. That's another aspect of Japanese. Oh they drop a lot of pronouns. So, natural Japanese. You will drop a lot of the pronouns. Then you will say anatawa, which is the you part. Yeah, anatawa is the you part. So anatawa is one of the um, more neutral ones. Yeah. And um, this is also one of the things you will find on this um, blog, uh, JapaneseLevelUp.com. There are two articles. Um, one is a hundred ways to say I, and the other is a hundred ways to say you. Ore. You will hear it quite a lot in Japan uh, anime. It's quite informal, but it's also quite macho. It's like exclusively male and a bit macho. Mm -hmm. So that's also one thing. Unfortunately, there's uh, Japanese culture is quite a bit sexist, or it's at least more obvious. But maybe they're also sexist in ways that we aren't in uh, Western culture. Just kind of sh of a shame because you can watch some anime that is very deeply f philosophical and has very deep and has a lot of amazing plot twists but still have some very lame, superficial, sexist jokes in them. It's quite... <laughs> so that's one aspect of Japanese culture, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah? Uh, what is written at home in Japanese now? You said that you wrote it on a script in Hira. So you mean Hira 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 Yeah. So Anaka ga suite, um, Onaka, um, stomach, ga, um, a subject, subject particle, suite um, is a word for empty, and Iru is the progressive. So stomach, subject is being empty. Yeah, the question is. Uh, this script, what you wrote before, was a hiragana, yeah? Um, oh, so the simple characters are hiragana, so this one, this stuff and that, and the complex characters are the kanji, the Chinese characters. And in this Sorry. case, so the first syllable is o, o. and then naka is kanji. Yeah. And so in one word you have one part that's hiragana and one part is kanji. Yeah, same you, have that, you have that quite a lot. So it's not only a combination of three alphabets, but sometimes you also have several al alphabets within one word. <laughs> and what does naka mean? Uh, stomach. And o. Oh, so this is the word. Uh, o. Oh. So in this case it's basically been... Um, uh, what's the word for it? It's become standard. So. Like originally the O was a, a formalization marker, but now it's onaka is just a normal way to say stomach. Mm -hmm. But in quite a lot of words you will see either a O or a Go in front of it, and it's one way to make a word more formal. It's also something like basically every part of the sentence you can make more formal. So it's not only pronouns, but also verbs and nouns. You can make 
everything more So you could say, go on, uh, go on, go 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 the difference between the O and the Go is that you use the Go for, for words from Chinese origin and the O as an honorific for words from Japanese origin. Okay, so you can say, Onaka Oga Osu Ite Osu. Yeah, that's 16. <laughs> yeah, that's not kind of like But I don't know whether that's correct Japanese because, because the O already came from this formalization. Maybe it sounds very weird if you say O Onaka. So I don't know where people actually say that. It's like in sake or sake. It's the same thing. <laughs> and that's one uh, other interesting thing to say. Sake actually means alcohol. So one of the mistakes I made was somebody offering me alcohol and saying, "Do you want sake?" And I think I was I replied like, "This is not sake, but sake just means alcohol and not only rice wine." <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't really know anything about like Chinese characters. So mm -hmm. how I mean I know you use anki and then that that. Uh, other website which has like these mnemonic devices for mm -hmm. learning the, the sound, but is there any systematic way you can learn these characters? Do yeah. They, do they build up in some way? Like um, so they or? they're broken down into parts. So for instance, in this one, um, if you see, um, yeah, okay, I can't mark part of a character, but this part is a character for moon. And if you have it in other characters, it's usually part. It usually means organ. So basically, a lot of body parts have <coughs> moon in their character. So that's one of the rules you can learn. So if you see moon on the left of a character, you know it's probably a body part, and you can learn that those kind of things. And it's also how you learn mnemonics that you break them down into parts. So you have this part this part, and this part, and this little thing. And then if you have a good um, kanji learning website, it will give you a mnemonic that combines all those parts. So for instance, um, as I already showed, the, uh, for instance, like this one. OK, this is a quite simple character. It only shows you white and feathers, but then you can even Click on white and it will show you that the character of white is then made up of sun and a little dot on top and so on. So you can really break them down. Yeah. Did you ever learn to, to handwrite these characters or you just type? I haven't tried yet. I can I can handwrite very simple characters like they, like which is only like two boxes on top of each other. But um, like otherwise like com very complex characters. Like this one with eleven strokes, I, I don't <coughs> try. It. Like, or I could try, of course. I mean, if I see this, I can just copy it, so to speak. But if I would handwrite something, I would only know very simple characters like day and moon and um, and so on, which only have a couple of strokes. Yeah. I never used Genki. I haven't used it. I, I know that a lot of people who use it to learn Japanese, but I haven't. Use it myself. Something like health, so oh, oh. so you, you don't say how are you, but are you healthy, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this, this is just is uh, is, is are. So health is question particle. How's your health? How's your health? 
Okay. Once again, there is no pronoun. Uh, there's no pronoun, no. Like, if you want to speak natural Japanese, you drop a lot of the pronouns. Yeah, but if you want to be natural and ask her, how is she? <laughs> a little sponsor. It's like, uh, what about? No, this she is, is not here. There is no okay. she in Japanese. It's actually pointing to the person you're talking to. There's only me and you. Okay. But there is no she. So if you want to talk about she, you can say koreba or kotsira. Uh, okay, let's okay. say the person that is not so, here. So, so if you... They like, like, say the name. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, that actually... Level, that person not being here, so I was only talking to Shukuro. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so actually, the most usual, uh, the most... The most normal way to say he or she is actually to use the name if you know where. Yeah. So, uh, what's your name? Chesco. Chesco. So Chesco. then I, I would not, if I would be talking about you, I would say, uh, I would rather say Chesco rather than he or she. Mm -hmm. And you actually also use it as what's very, in, what would be very weird in, for instance, English. If I would say you, I could actually also say Chesco. And otherwise, the pronouns for he and she are kare for he and kanojo for she. But kanojo also means. Uh, they, like they also <laughs> have, have another meaning. Kare can mean um, boyfriend. boyfriend. And kanojo can mean girlfriend. And I ask you, uh, that was my second question about <laughs> syntax. syntax, yeah. <laughs> so what's the... No, oh, the general just... uh, description of syntax, and maybe with some sentences, uh, for example. Um, yeah, let me think of an example sentence. So basically, I can try to find one in my monkey deck. So, um... Yeah. Uh, it, now it's actually in the same order, but do you want to see one? Um well basically like a lot of things are the other way around, so uh, well, there's one thing that the verb comes at the end, but also always. the verb always comes at the end. Everything before is quite free, but one thing that really turns stuff around is that relative clauses become before the stuff they modify. So you don't say, I do this, 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 and this because blah, blah, blah. Now you say blah, 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 because, and then the rest of the sentence. Or you wouldn't say, um, the woman that is wearing the white skirt, but um, the white skirt wearing woman, and so on. And especially in complex. Um, the white skirt wearing woman. Yeah, exactly. Everything so is. Even in the, in the relative clause, the, the verb is at the end, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't finish my first question. Oh, sorry. The question was. Uh, so as you said, it's a combination of kanji and hiragana and uh, is there any possibility to find the same sentence only in kanji or in hiragana or it's always a combination? Uh, it's mostly a combination, but um, just as in, Japan, uh, in Chinese, um, you see a tendency that people start to write more and more, com uh, uh, more, and more complex characters with a simple uh, yeah, in this case with the syllabary instead, and in the case of Japanese with the Roman letters instead. And, uh, if someone has practiced only katakana, for example, is he able to understand a mixed sentence from kanji, katakana, and uh, or it difficult? <laughs> it's very difficult. All the systems, um, yeah? Basically, there, but there are two things to help. In Anki, I've um, programmed it like this, that if I move her over something, I get the simple characters. So now I can just, this is just basically hiragana, so the syllabary on top of the complex characters. And if you're in your browser, then you can install something that's called um, the Kaicha, which is a browser add-on, and then you can also mark complex characters and get an explanation of them. 
Yeah. The second question. <laughs> yeah. Is there any writing system in computers that you can write, write with Latin characters, something in Japanese that you know, and uh, automatically when you finish the word and you press space, translate it in Japanese or not? I don't know whether this exists, but it's basically, basically, when I'm um, <coughs> typing with the Japanese keyboard, um, I'm typing the A, the M, and the E. I'm you, you saw it quickly before that I was typing A and yeah. E. But yeah, like, okay, it's up to you whether you learn um, the kanji, because it's quite an effort to learn about 2,000 characters you will need to be able to read properly. But this um, simpler stuff like the hiragana, <coughs> syllabary, the syllabaries, the hiragana and the katakana, you should probably learn. You can you can easily learn both within a week, and then it's it's the minimum amount of reading you should be able to do, basically. So yeah. yeah. I mean, there is this website called Lexilogos.com that actually allows you to type in both hiragana, katakana, and katakana. Okay, Lexilogos.com. Okay, I will write that over here as well. So, let's see, logos, the call, like this, right? Hi. You guys know, do you guys know Reading Tutor? Uh, reading, reading Tutor. Reading Tutor. Reading it's tutor. a website reading. when when you put it's like a website where you, you stick like Japanese text and it, it gives you like all the vocabulary on the, on, the, on the side and then you can click on a country or a compound and it gives you the... Yeah. So how is it? Is it just it's like this? Like reading tutor. It's like debugging, separate it. But you have to look yeah, and then Google for it. Japanese and then you put Japanese as a keyword as better. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, reading tutor for Japanese is really useful. You can analyze the text like that. Mm. And one other thing that might be good to know when um, reading Japanese, or especially what I mean oh. is. Um, yeah, that's one, that one. Yeah. When reading this Fudigata that like you sometimes yeah. see to explain a character, if it's on a computer, it's usually automatically generated. So if a character is ambiguous between different pronunciations, it's in one case of a hundred, it will get it wrong. It's not that big a deal because usually once you learn a character, you'll also know which ones are ambiguous and then you'll see like, oh, stupid computer did it wrong again. <laughs> um, one th also other interesting aspect about this writing system is also that the same word with different meanings is written with different characters. So there are a lot of homonyms in um, in Japanese, but then the different meanings will all be written with different characters. So that actually makes the writer, the written language, quite unambiguous, which is a bit of a problem for creative writers. But um, that it's, but otherwise, it's quite cool that it's so unambiguous. Anything else? Otherwise, it's also about time to. I lost Furigana. Uh, so Furigana is when you have a complex character and you write the syllabary either um, on top or next to it. Ah, okay, so it's not something different, it's just a combination of... It's, uh, well, Furigana is actually only this part, like, like <coughs> a simple <coughs> syllabary that is written next to or above a complex character. Like, either because you're learning it and then okay. it's easy to have this, or for materials directed to children, or even for things directed to adults if somebody is using a character that's not that common. By the way, I'm, I'm a Japanese language teacher. I okay. I've been in years. <laughs> and we're near, near native speakers. So if you have any questions, I can probably well, okay. add some other you know, <laughs> details if you want. Or if you want to ask me. It's, uh, it's okay. There was some questions. Yeah. Any good book uh, for someone who is just planning to travel there? 
So I brought the basics. I brought the two that I've used. There's complete Japanese, and yeah, the only two comments. It's a very good book, um, but two things. The complete is a bit optimistic. I think you will get rather to A2 or B1 rather than B2. And the other thing is that they don't go a lot into the kanji. But otherwise, this is a very good book. And it's also quite natural. Like it has quite natural dialogues. It takes um, different levels of formality, except the most informal ones. But that's a problem of all learning materials, even for other languages that they don't learn the most informal stuff. Difference with Japanese is that when you pick a textbook, you probably should look at the levels of formality because you might be picking up a book that only teaches you how to talk with the emperor or something like this. Um, so yeah, when looking for books, look out that they at least explain and have yeah different levels of formality because it's a much more important aspect of the language than it might be in other languages. And another one I used was this Japanese sentence patterns for effective communication. It has basically all the beginner and intermediate sentence patterns, short explanation, and then five to ten example sentences to show it. So this was quite useful. Yeah? The colloquial series is good. Colloquial Japanese? Colloquial Japanese. Because this introduces the country from the first lesson, mm -hmm. step by step. Yeah, might be useful because the, the how we call it, teach yourself is very good. You get a very high level, you can say, mm -hmm. on complexity in a dialect, but there's no script. Yeah. Or it's very easy, like you know, you know just for kids. And yeah. Just, yeah. Um, do you recommend any material in the Japanese language that is hold on, hold on, hold on, I haven't finished something, <laughs> which um, which is only available in the Japanese language and has never been translated into any other major other language? Um, yeah. So, um... I mean, after you study Japanese, what do you use it for? Because going to Japan, <laughs> it's, fun, well, I, it's fun to talk with them in Japanese, I, but I, reading anything that is only available in Japanese. I have a lot of, uh, I watch a lot of anime. And there, and, um, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, substantial stuff that's worth reading. <laughs> Um, it's entertaining, anime is very entertaining. Yeah, yeah, but, that, like, um, I would also recommend um, looking at the media guide, because there, there's, as I said, there's recommendations for everything but poetry, basically. Um, let's see, other materials. So what, what are the ones that you... So one... Now, for example, read... in Chinese, for example, in Chinese. Chinese is an ancient language, okay, mm -hmm. and there are lots of materials that were translated into English. Ah, words, something like but this. But you can still dig deep and find Chinese that even the Chinese don't know about. <laughs> Foreigners can find that, and you can get some wisdom from it. Okay, mm -hmm. now uh, I'm sure that the Japanese culture also contains some information that they hold sacred that they don't translate into other languages. So yeah. what are those? So, um, I, yeah, okay, I will just answer this question. So I haven't. Read anything like that yet? Okay. Um, but one I know of is the Pillow Diaries. That one should be quite interesting. It's from, uh, I think, from um, the 10th century in Japan, and it's about um, yeah, women, a woman at court, um, or women. I don't know whether it was one or several writing her diary. Okay. Just come back to the books. <laughs> it's like yeah. yeah. There's the honey on the rope to learn Japanese. Then. <laughs> so yeah, that was it.